kind of a tease of where Merlin's journey is for this upcoming season. Yeah, um, well one of, one of the big major things, is I don't know how much you know already, um, is that it's set a year in the future. So, um, so a lot's happened in that, in, in, in that year. Um, regardless, you know, people obviously change and, um, and the big things that, that Merlin's been through and the life changing events that have happened so far in the, in the second series. Um, have changed him. I, I, th I think. I think he is. He is a bit more of an adult, and, and, and as we've seen him as that innocent youth, he, his one of his big downfalls is that he is too trusting and he is a little bit naive. And um, I think he's been betrayed enough times and, and abused enough times to, to learn from that. And um, that's one of the things I've been fighting for is that, that is, he's, he's grown up a bit. And, uh, and, um, and yeah, things cannot change place, and, and as, as well we're seeing a pound a paranoia and a, and a fear, a deep, deep fear of, of, of something happening, something brewing, um, which which comes to a head in, um, in the second in the second episode. It's a two-parter that we open up with. Um, so yeah, big changes, um, big developments uh, uh, to come as well, and um, and iconic things from Legend as well, which which are being introduced more and more and more. So. Yeah, lots, lots going on. I'm sure I've missed loads, but, but that's the that's main. <laughs> so is the, the Merlin having to kill Morgana mm -hmm. kind of the turning point thing for the character? I think that was a big thing, uh, because he... I think one of Merlin's big things is, is his morals and, and, and he cares about people and, and he, he, even though his head's saying one thing, his heart's completely saying the opposite and um, and to, to, to have killed Mor Mor Morgana was one of those things which was unbearable to him and, but he had, he had to go, he had to think about the future, he had to go this is, this is the right thing for, for what I've been told to do and that comes back Boy, does that come back to haunt him whenever in 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 this in the third series, partly? Because well, um, she's his friend too. She's his uh, friend. Yeah, very well played by you. Oh, thank you. Both you. Yeah, no, it was good. It was, oh, thank you. Yeah, it was. It, it couldn't. Be, when I first read it, I thought, are we going to do this? Are we because it was. It was. I thought it was very very dark for for a series which does explore darkness, but but isn't generally. You know, there's a mixture of of the. Of the quirky, happy episodes, and then they very often throw in a bit of adult stuff there as well. And that was one of the things I thought, are we going to let Merlin kill Morgana? Like, and they did, which is fair play, I think, you know. Right. Can stuff. you um, tell us a little bit more about how your relationship with Arthur is going to evolve? Yeah, one of the great things that they've, that, that has been introduced now is um, we, we, we very much see their relationship as the servant master, the, the, the comedy between the, the, the status um, between the two of them. Um, but we're now seeing the Merlin of old, the Merlin of, of legend, as the, as the wise advisor to the king coming through. Um, so it's not just about the power, his magical power, we're seeing the power of his words and, 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 and how he can use that. Um, and where Merlin battles and, 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 and uses his, his magic in, against the foes, the power of, of his thoughts and his words are, are for Arthur, and that's, and that's that's one of the things that's coming through. You're seeing, you're seeing Merlin thinking in a different way, and Arthur listening in a different way, and um, and that's one of the big things between the, the major changes in the third series. Great, thank you. Are there more repercussions from? Uh, you know, one of the commendable thing that Merlin did was. He promised to release the dragon. He did. Yeah. Are there more repercussions in uh, in series three about that? Um, not not so much um, for releasing for for releasing the dragon, but um, but Merlin did uh, acquire the, the the powers of the dragon lord from from his father, which I think is is a, is a big thing because that's actually something that he learns to use and, and, and to, to harness um, in, a, in a way, in a really unexpected way actually um, because he's, he's now got that, that tie to the dragon the dragon no longer in his in his eyes has the power. He he's the you know he's the freaking dragon lord like and he is gonna you know he's gonna tell him how it is. 
And the last one thing we're, we're seeing is that he's, he's learning to, to use, the, use the dragon as a tool now, as opposed to an enigma that he needed to work out because he's taking no nonsense from him now. I think, he, I think he's had enough of, 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 his, of, his, of the dragon's riddles and that. And it's like, like just tell me straight, and tell me how it is. And, um, and it's great that we've got John Hart coming back to, 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 to do all that as well. There's been so many different retellings of Arthurian legends. What did you, did you take anything from any other versions of, of the retellings of, of the story of Merlin and, and preparing for the role? I've read loads and loads of stuff. I've read all the classical Arthurian legends and more or less anything with Merlin in the title. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a, I'm a big, I'm a big research geek when it comes to when it comes to it because I think I think you should if, if you're if you're you're working in a fantasy genre and especially in medieval Camelot Arthurian legend why not read all there is to, to offer out there it might, you might not directly you know use it but it's there somewhere and um, what was great is on, the, on this we very rarely see a young Merlin before he was good before he he was good at what he did and. and um, and I've definitely been given a lot of free reign and been able to, to put my own take on it, I, I guess. So, um, but yeah, I've definitely have, I've informed myself as much as I possibly could um, on what there is out there. Now, do you have, especially when it comes to movie and TV, do you have a, a favourite Merlin that, that's been in, on the screen before you? Uh, well, I mean, there's the there is there is the the classic the mini series of, of, of Sam Neill. Um, did it, um, and I think I think he I think he's great, and I think he's did a great job on it. Um, I mean, <laughs> could revert to the the, the the Disney sword and the stone Merlin, but that's, that's just because it's fun. <laughs> the child in me is screaming that inside, but, but the adults go on Sunday. <laughs> Talk about working with the special effects, and, you know, the magic stuff that's added in later. How, you know, as it, how do you deal? Has it become second nature now that you've done a few seasons? Um, second nature, I don't know, because uh, because it, it's you're, you're you're often told what, what, what the thing is that you have to interact with, or that you have to speak to, or that you have to run from, um, and um, and it all differs. But but um, yeah, you definitely become a lot more. Climatized to it because because um, I think when, when when you first look at the green screen and they go right this is gonna this is a thirty foot dragon talking to you saying this and that's about to breathe fire at you and you go right <laughs> <laughs> uh, so so whenever you know initially it's it's that but once you see what they do and 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 how it turns out and, and that, they do a great job on it you, you don't fear it so much. Um, so it's uh, so yeah, you definitely you become a, a bit more confident. But um, I guess those sort of things. I think as long as you just go for it, as long as you just don't, don't be embarrassed and just you know be as, as big and as bold as you can, you should be okay. How about some of the um, like sword fighting training, weapons training, stunt work? Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, unfortunately, I don't get a lot of that yeah. uh, because uh, you know I never get to look what cool. About the future? Mm -hmm. no, um, you have to look cool. Some coming up though, like that has to be on the horizon. I got some. I got some cool stuff. Uh, Unfortunately, not sword or weapons related. If I, ever, if I ever get a sword in my hand, I tend to drop it. <laughs> or yeah. something, if someone knocks it out of my hand. Yeah. Uh, which I think is good. Merlin should be a good fighter. Because his thing is, his thing is magic. He's magic. And he, he, you know, he's, he's, if he was a good fighter, he would, he would fight. But he's forced to use his powers because that's his, that's his world. And, um, and the, you know, Arthur is, is, is the fighter. And Bradley gets loads and loads of, loads of fight training. He's become, he's become really, really really good at it. He's, you know, we've got stuntmen coming in and fighting him and, and he's he's up there with them and they're, they're even saying you know, how good he is. So, um, so it's great to get the stunt training and, 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 and that. And we get to do all our own, most of our, all our own stuff as well, especially with horses. This year we do all our own horse stuff and all, all the stuff in the heads. It's cool. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, we're, we're, we're lucky. Very, very lucky. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, just one thing. The, the castle itself is a character. Definitely. Uh, but are there rooms that you have not personally seen because the place is so good? Yeah. It's a, it's a weird place. Um, <laughs> Because it's it looks lovely, like you look at it and you're, and you're like, wow, it's, it's it's proper fairy tale, it's proper Disney. Um, 
but there's dark places and underneath the stretch for miles and miles actually underground um, to, to different parts to different cities which are used as escape routes for for um, for, for uh, I, guess, I think it was whenever in the, in the uh, around the second world war I think it was whenever the French and Germans were hiding uh, down there they were able to, to, to get out but, but there's some scary stuff down there I mean there's, there's a wall um, that's close off to the public but we've, we've filmed down there and it's clearly some people were found down there and obviously a firing squad and they were just lined up and, and it's just a line of bullets bottles right across the wall and you, you know we went down there and saw that and when you see something that's so nice but there's these dark secrets underneath you're right the character the castle is such a character it's, it's so much on and, um, and it's, I don't think we'll ever understand fully is it, you know what's going on in there. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.